YouTube, good morning and welcome back to the channel. Guys, have I got a banger for you today. I've had a couple of people hit me up on LinkedIn about doing videos for best practice on Sentinel. So I thought, why not do this? So grab that coffee, grab that whiskey. It's festive season, so grab some eggnog if you're into that type of stuff because it's going to get damn juicy. Also, if you could, drop a comment and a like down below. It will help support the channel. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Come on. You know it makes sense. Microsoft Sentinel best practice for admin users. Now, you're probably thinking best practice. I hate that term. Honestly, I have mixed opinions about the term best practice. I saw an article on LinkedIn regarding the best practice terminology and it states best practices aren't simple. There is a very, very strong tendency to use best practice as an excuse to switch off the practitioner's brain and simply apply a one size fits all solution, which works for someone somewhere once upon a time. So they wrote it down since then and it's been accepted as the ultimate truth. And that's the reality we live in today, right? So Microsoft tried very hard to give us best practice guidance when it comes to deploying a solution or a service. Uh, a lot of it might be relevant for you, it might not, or you might just assume that it's there so you will follow it to the letter, uh, in which some cases may result in everything being fine, but later down the line you may think, why did I do this? It has no relevance, it's costing me fortune. Uh, so in this video, I'll be outlining the best practice for administration users of Microsoft Sentinel, according to the Microsoft Docs Online. Now remember, not all of this solution advisory will be relevant for your business. So pre-deployment activities. Before deploying Sentinel, you should be taking the following steps to help focus your deployment on providing maximum value. So the first thing is you need to assess which data sources uh, you need, uh, the data size requirements to accurately project your deployment's budget and timeline. You need to determine this information during your business use case review or by evaluating a current seam that you already have in place potentially. If you have a seam in place, analyze your data to understand which data sources provide the most value, which use cases relate to that data source, and then go and take that information and then present that for a pre-deployment activity for data source integration. Next, you actually need to design your Sentinel workspace. I actually cover this in a separate video, uh, Architecting and Designing Microsoft Sentinel. Uh, I'll put the little card thing in the top right. Then you need to start planning your budget. So consider cost impl uh, implications for each plan scenario. So make sure you've got enough budget to cost, uh, cover the cost of data ingestion for both Sentinel, uh, Log Analytics, Azure Data Explorer for long-term retention, uh, the cost of running playbooks, uh, any additional licenses for service integrations, uh, Linux Log Forwarder VMs, OMS Proxy Gateways, if you're using Logstash, uh, and if you're going to use Azure Arc and so on. We've then got workspace design. So once you've figured out the pre-deployment activities, next you need to understand some design questions regarding your workspace. So do you deploy a new or existing workspace? Do you have an existing workspace that you can use for Sentinel? If you don't, then you'll be creating a new workspace and decide if you'll be keeping the data in multiple Azure regions or a single region. If you have an existing workspace that you might use, consider how much data you'll be ingesting. If you'll be ingesting more than like 100 gig of data a day, Microsoft recommend that you use a separate workspace for the sake of cost efficiency. Then define if you have multiple tenants. So do you have a single tenancy or multiple tenancy? So this is a rather extensive question as it relies on the ability for you to leverage Lighthouse or not. Then we look at log specific tenants. So log specific tenant boundaries, such as Office 365, Microsoft Defender. So these can only be uh, stored in the same workspace within the same tenant. So a great deal of consideration here needs to be thought through. 
Although it is possible to use custom data collectors via the API to collect tenant uh, specific logs from a workspace in another tenant, Microsoft recommend that you do not do this due to the following disadvantages. So data collected by custom connectors will be ingested into custom tables. Therefore, you won't be able to use the built-in workbooks uh, and analytic rules because it will have that custom log feature. So custom tables are not considered by some of the built-in features such as uh, user entity behavior analytics and machine learning rules. There is also additional costs and effort required for the custom connectors such as uh, Azure Functions and Logic Apps. Then you have to consider collecting uh, non-security data. Uh, are we going to use the same log analytics to collect non-security data? So while Microsoft generally recommend that customers keep a separate workspace for their non-security data so the data is not subject to Sentinel costs, there may be situations where combining security and non-security data is less expensive than separating them. For example, an organization that has security logs ingesting 50 gigabytes a day and operation and performance logs ingesting at 50 gigabytes a day, as well for chargeback, it might make sense to separate them due to the high volume of data that's being ingested. So this following table compares workspace options with or without the separate workspace. So in this example, you'd have a cost saving of a thousand bucks. I'm English. I don't know why I said books. Um, so yeah, a thousand bucks, a thousand bucks per month um, by combining both workspaces. And the operations team will have the benefit of the three months of free retention instead of 31 days. Again, this is an example is only relevant for both security and non-security data each day. Um, so this can be found on the Microsoft Docs page. I just swung that in here uh, just to kind of, you know, show the uh, different options here. Next is role-based access control. Quite a big one here. Um, I also cover this in another video, but we can lightly touch on it here. Um, so controlling the data uh, by access and table. So consideration needs to be taken if you need to control data access by source or table, which means you should consider using the resource, resource context role-based access control in the following situations. If you have to control access at the row level, such as providing multiple owners on each data source or table. If you have multiple uh, custom data sources and tables, each one will need separate permissions per source. In most cases, where you do not need to control access at the table or row level and providing multiple data sources with separate missions, you should consider using a single Sentinel workspace with table level RBAC for role-based access control. And don't lose track of your RBAC model. It's, in very, it's imperative that you keep on top of the RBAC model. So create Azure resource, uh, create Azure Active Directory groups. Uh, so this gives a consistent and desirable naming convention as well. Um, if you follow that naming convention, that's fit for your business. So you can easily understand which Azure AD group has which role and which users need to be fit for those permissions. We then look at data collection. So when it comes to data collection, in order to get the best results out of your analytics, you need to make sure that you have access and visibility to quality data. So it's important to collect data from all logs and all sources to make sure that no situation is ignored. Again, that statement kind of contradicts itself because some security organizations will say, well, we need a use case for this log, um, which is totally understandable. So if you don't have a use case for this log, then don't collect the data. But having data available will help you art architect and build Sentinel queries to monitor specific resources. So if you're unsure which data connectors will best serve your environment to get you up and running, start by enabling the free data connectors. So the free data connectors will start showing you value as soon as you get Sentinel deployed. Once you continue to plan and uh, look at other uh, data connectors, and then you can see which will fit in your monetary budget. So for custom data connectors, start by setting up a syslog or CF connector. These require a Linux virtual machine, so you should start with the highest priority first, as well as any Linux-based devices. So don't just go and collect any logs if you don't need them.
if your data ingestion becomes too expensive because you're forwarding uh, like a bunch of Palo Alto logs or, you know, you need to filter any logs, then you should use the Azure Monitor agent. Next, we have log filtering. So in some circumstances, you may want to filter logs that are being collected or even log content before the data is ingested into Sentinel. For example, you may want to filter out logs that are irrelevant or unimportant to security operations, or you may want to remove unwanted details from log messages. So filtering message content may be very useful when you're trying to drive down the cost for working with syslog or CEF or Windows-based logs that have may have irrelevant details. So you can filter these logs by using one of the following methods. So you can use the Azure Monitor agent. That's a cool little graphic. Um, so these are supported by both Windows and Linux to ingest Windows security events. Uh, so you can filter the logs that are collected by configuring the agent to only collect specific events. Then you also have call Logstash. See how that swooped in there. Uh, so Logstash supports filter messaging content, including making changes to the log messages. We then have permissions. Again, this is kind of based on the RBAC permissions here, but I'll just quickly talk about these permissions which we have available for you. So we have Sentinel Reader. So Sentinel Reader can view data, incidents, workbooks, and other Sentinel resources. You then have Sentinel Responder. This can, in addition to the Sentinel Reader, manage incidents, assign, dismiss, close, etc. You then have Sentinel Contributor. Again, this covers all of the above in a hierarchical manner uh, and gives you the ability to create and edit workbooks as well as analytics and other Sentinel resources. Then you have the Sentinel uh, Automation Contributor, which allows Sentinel to add playbooks to automation rules. This is, me this is not really meant for user accounts and more of like a uh, automation administrative account. So for best results, these roles should be assigned on the resource group that contains Sentinel's workspace. This way, the roles will apply to all the resources that are deployed to support Sentinel, as those resources should be in place at the same time as the resource group. Another option is to assign these roles directly on the Sentinel workspace itself. If you do this, you must also assign the same roles on the Security Insights uh, solution resource in that workspace. So you may need to assign them on other resources as well. Uh, and you will also be consistently managing uh, these assignments on the resources. So a little bit more on the permissions. Um, when you're working with playbooks, you might want to assign specific members of your security operations team to actually have that ability to modify logic apps uh, to use that, you know, security orchestration, automation and response mechanism is built into Sentinel. Then you have data source permissions. So for a user to add data connectors, uh, you must assign the user right permission for the Sentinel uh, on that Sentinel workspace. Additionally, if you need to connect something like uh, Defender for Endpoint, they also need the, those same permissions, uh, not those same permissions, uh, global administrative permissions within that uh, specific um, product area. You then have assigning incident permissions. So if a guest user needs to be able to uh, assign incidents, then in addition to the Sentinel responder role, uh, the user will also need to be assigned the role of directory reader. So this role is not an Azure role, but it's an act, uh, Azure Active Directory role. You then have workbook permissions. So creating and deleting workbooks. For a user to create and delete a Sentinel workbook, the user will need to be assigned the Azure Monitor role of the monitoring contributor. So this role is not necessarily uh, needed for using and reading workbooks, but it's actually used for creating and deleting workbooks. So then we look at threat intelligence. So Sentinel gives you a few different ways to use threat intelligence feed to enhance your security analysis ability to detect and prioritize known threats. So you can use one of the many available integrated threat intelligence platform products, uh, and you can connect to something like Taxi, uh, and you can also take advantage of Sticks. Um, and these are all threat intelligence sources, and you can make use of any custom solutions as well 
that may communicate directly with the Microsoft graph um, and similarly uh, other form of indicators. So you can connect uh, threat intelligence sources from playbooks as well. This will help you enrich uh, different incidents using the TI um, information platform and help you get direct investigation and actually respond. Honestly, there's a lot of feeds here and I'm just clicking through these right now. Um, I won't run through them all, but I'll drop a link in the description below and you can all check them out. But it's, you know, it's, it's very imperative that you, if you have TI uh, in, in your environment, that you get that integrated um, sooner rather than later. We then have a look at auditing Sentinel activities. So planned for auditing activities is part of this best practice model. It's important that organizations have the ability to track and trace what was performed in their environment to ensure it was done firstly correctly, secondly securely, thirdly it complied with your governance rules within your organization. And just to make sure, you know, that people in your security operations team are not doing anything malicious. So you can view audit data and queries run on activities performed in your Sentinel workspace. So this can be done using the Azure activity table, which provides details about all actions taken in Sentinel, such as editing alert rules, for example. The Azure activity table does not log specific query data. You can perform tasks like find all actions taken by a specific user in the last 24 hours, for example. You can find all the deleted operations performed within your Sentinel workspace. You then have the additional, the LA query logs table, which provides detail about the queries run in log analytics, including queries run from Sentinel. So the LA query logs table can retrieve information like when queries are ran, who ran the queries, what tool was used to run the queries in log analytics, the query text themselves, performance data on each query, how long did it take to run, etc. So just planning your SOC using Sentinel from an administration perspective, you can see that the extensive list is required to help you achieve, you know, full maximum efficiency and maximum effort required. Hopefully that's given you more insight into the, uh, in quotes, best practice approach for Microsoft Sentinel. Uh, in an upcoming video, I'll probably be doing a similar uh, approach, uh, but from an analysis perspective. Thanks for watching the video. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you don't, well, that's just fine. Please subscribe, tell your friends, tell your family, tell your... Wait, I'm just interested. Do actually any of you tell your friends or family about these videos? Let me know if you do, um, um, you know, that'll be cool. I mean, if you do, that's awesome. I appreciate that. If you don't, well, you know, that's just fine. Enjoy your day. Cheers.